Well, today we have a topic that I think a lot of people are going to appreciate, and that is how do you date if you're an introvert? Thank you so much for joining us again on Second Act TV. Once again, I'm so happy to welcome back Sandy Weiner, the founder of Last First Date and the author of Choice Points in Dating. Sandy, thanks so much for joining me again. So fun to be back with you, Selka. Well, today we have a topic that I think a lot of people are going to appreciate and, and frankly, something I've overlooked on this channel, and that is how do you date if you're an introvert? You know, I being an extrovert, <laughs> it, it's something, you know, I really don't think about. And, and in the last a few weeks, especially, we've had these comments that, well, what about us? You know, we, we had videos on flirting and, you know, how to approach people, et cetera. And then you came out with a, a video as well, you know, introverts and dating. I thought, you know, this is really important information. So, so let's talk about that today. And let's start with what exactly is an introvert? Because there's some uh, confusion about that. Yes, there's a lot of confusion about what an introvert is. And I think what most people think of when they think of introverts is somebody who's shy, mm -hmm. somebody who has social anxiety, somebody who just doesn't want to get out there and be social. And that's not true. And I learned the truth about what introversion is from Susan Cain, who's the author of Quiet, The Power of Introverts in a World That Can't Stop Talking. I've actually seen her speak a few times and she's an introvert married to an extrovert. And she really defined it in a way that made so much sense to me. So what she says is that shyness is the fear of being judged, socially being judged. And introversion is much more about the preference for environments where there's a little less going on. So it has to do with stimulus. So an introvert can get very shut down in a place with a lot of noise, a lot of people, a lot of uh, just a lot going on. And so, for example, you go to a party. I, I went somewhere recently. Oh, yeah, I went to a meetup and it had like 150 people there, all strangers, except for the person I came with. And as a person who's largely introverted, I'm sort of in the middle of the, between an introvert and extrovert, which is called an ambivert. So some of our audience may also be ambiverts where they're, they have some some uh, introversion, some extroversion, it's really about how you recharge your batteries. And so when I was in this social environment and seeing tons of people there who I didn't know, all of them talking, it felt like they were all just having stupid conversations. <laughs> <laughs> and I was being really judgmental and I'm like, I don't really want to, I don't want to talk to anyone. I just, I ended up going for a walk with my friend and then coming back. And I think I got to know maybe one person, but I, I got shut down. And so I get recharged in quiet and extroverts get re recharged in stimulating environments. So an extrovert would have loved that meetup because they get to talk to millions of people and eat food and hear music and dance in public. And, but introverts can get drained on dates and that's the problem because they're in a new environment. They may get overwhelmed, especially if the conversation is not going in a way that, that feels good to them. They may, they may get drained. They may get drained from long dates. I mean, just tons of ways that introverts can really struggle in dating. That is so interesting. You just described the extrovert. I mean, that's Paul. When, when we go anywhere, the more the merrier, and he'll know everybody within five minutes. It's crazy. It's a real, it's a talent, actually. I don't mind that situation, but do I really like doing that? I can, but it's almost more of an act. Maybe I'm always <laughs> somewhere. In I think, yeah, you sound like more of an introvert. Yeah, so that's so interesting. And then the other thing I think that's important to get across is that a lot of people, and, and I think you alluded to it, but that uh, see introverts as sometimes being aloof or even off-puttish, that, mm. you know, that there's something wrong. And I think that's the message up front that, uh, that I'd like to help get across, you know, by everything I've read here and, and listening to your video, is that there's nothing wrong. 
it's it, it it's one personality trait and another and there's you know one isn't better than the other i think shyness and social anxiety is a whole other topic would you agree with that a hundred percent and i'll give you an example so susan kane who wrote that book mm -hmm. And she's really known as the expert on introversion. She has a whole community of people who are introverts and who really love going deep with people. She talks about some of the skills that she developed because she's married to an extrovert. So one of the examples that she gave once when I heard her speak was she would get in the car and her husband would put the music on really loud because he liked stimulus. So it's finding a way to coexist with somebody who is much more extroverted than you and finding the way to be like at a party. She used to take her own car um, so that she could leave early. And that's also something that a lot of introverts, they just get drained. Like I knew that within 10 minutes, I did not want to stay at that meetup. Hmm, so interesting. Again, I have a, one of my best friends is seventh grade. You just described her. And I always got mad at her. And I said, Debbie, can't you, can't you, why, why do you have to leave so early? Why? She is an introvert. And that's yeah. okay. And and yeah. I almost feel bad now at some of the, uh, the advice I gave, not just her, but, but people in general, you know, it's, it's just put yourself out there. Do you, <laughs> that, that's not necessarily something they want or, or can do. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. So I'm really appreciate that you brought this to my attention and I, I enjoyed the reading on it too. I'll link to the book uh, that, that you referenced as well. Mm. Well, so how does that affect dating? What I've, there's a lot here, I think to cover. Uh, I think one of the things I want to bring up the first question, and then let's go into some tips for, for introverts is that, an extrovert, one of the real benefits that I'm getting out of this is that because they do connect more on, on a deeper level, one-on-one, -on -one, that you really have a chance of developing a relationship with an introvert, perhaps much better than with an extrovert who, you know, is somewhat aloof when it comes to that. Um, definitely introverts tend to go deeper. Extroverts doesn't mean that they're not deep, but they're also comfortable with less deep conversation. Yeah. And so they may be able to just be the social butterfly and the charming one and yeah. all those things that make you great at a party, like, like your boyfriend. Mm. But it doesn't mean that introverts are, again, smarter, better, yeah. worse. You know, it's just really how we recharged and what we do with stimulation, you know, that all the noise, all the stuff that happens in the yeah. world and finding a way to be in the world, not to not go to things. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a daughter who's very introverted and she didn't realize why she was avoiding certain social situations with friends. And once she realized, oh, I just, I don't really love these kinds of things, but I'm gonna push myself to go mm -hmm. to them but do it on my terms. And so that's mm -hmm. what I feel about dating. We have to do it on our terms so that introverts can have a good time and won't stay home from a date because they're afraid that they're going to get burnt out. Well, let's go into some of the tips that you have. The, the, the first one here is manage your time, like you just said, so you don't get burnt out. What exactly do you mean by that? Well, definitely on a first date when this is a stranger and most of the time people are dating online. So they're meeting people they don't know. Mm -hmm. It's exhausting to <laughs> put yourself out there to have conversations with a stranger. Mm -hmm. So limit the time, uh, you know, 45 minute date, keep it short. And that way you leave yourself wanting more. You leave them wanting to get to know you better. This happens also a lot when you're meeting somebody where you've had a long distance um, relationship before you meet. So maybe you're getting to know each other on video or, you know, FaceTime, Zoom, whatever, and phone calls. Then this person comes to town or you go to their town and you feel like, oh, I have to spend so much time with them because I'm only going to see them for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. And then you're exhausted and it can actually sabotage the relationship before it even starts. Very interesting. I, I, I'm sure people are relating to this. I mean, on some level I can as well. So I, I'm interested to hear the comments on this. And especially if you consider yourself to be an introvert, please comment and let us know the challenges and how, you over, or, you know, how you're dealing with them in dating. I'd, I'd love to hear that. Uh, the second one here, come prepared with good questions to make conversations more meaningful and interesting. That's probably good advice for just about it, anybody, but let's go into that, why that's especially important for introverts. I think it's important for introverts because they can get shut down easily. 
And so if they're coming and feeling prepared, and this is true for any social situation, mm -hmm. when you feel that you can add value, that you can ask good questions, when you can bring value also by bringing good answers. And when I work with, with a client, I have them come to dates with answers to the common questions that they may get. And so if you're also coming with good questions, you're going to guarantee that you have something to talk about mm -hmm. and you'll be able to keep the conversation going, which is important to somebody who can be overwhelmed easily with the stimulus. Yeah. When, when you say good questions, uh, what give us an example. Of what's a good question? So a lot of people say, what do you do? What do you do? That's like the worst question. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's common. I mean, you do want to know what do they do for a living, but more mm. important than what do you do is what do you love about what you do? Mm. So just changing the words a little bit, what do you love about what you do? Or what would you do if you could do anything in the world other than what you do or what drew you to this career? Mm -hmm. Because most people just find out the surface, you know, just the day-to-day, -day, the mm -hmm. I'm a lawyer, I'm a doctor, I'm a teacher. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't give me insight into who you are. Mm -hmm. So an introvert wants to get to the meat and the bones. They want to know, what are your values? So same thing with travel. What did you love about that trip? Why did you do this? You know, the whys, the I love it because kinds of questions and answers. That's where you start to really get to know somebody in a deeper way without being probing, without sharing too much too soon. Well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, you get to the heart of the what really matters. So uh, exactly. yeah, good. And, and one thing I do with questions that I find easy, I don't know, maybe introvert wouldn't, um, is just asking questions. I had somebody ask me because, well, you know, I don't know what to how to carry on a conversation. You don't have to worry about that. Just ask questions that, you know, open-ended questions, not yes and no, that you don't have to worry about talking and you're making this person feel interesting. <laughs> exactly. That's, and yeah. with online dating, you get a lot of information about them. So right. you come in, you already know some things, hopefully, because somebody has written a profile, but yeah. And then there are people who ask questions that are really annoying, like how long have you been single? Why are you on this dating oh, site? What are you looking yeah. for? So with things like that, the more you're prepared, the better it is, because then you don't feel like a deer in the headlights or you don't feel annoyed, like what's wrong with this person? Why are they asking me these yeah. stupid questions? It's very easy to judge, but also understand that it's hard for people to get a conversation going with a total stranger. I mean, right. you know, it's like cold calls. Yeah. Well, for male introverts, when a great thing you can say, and then all women will love just tell me more. <laughs> <laughs> the best. <laughs> I always love that. Uh, number three, take time to recharge after phone calls and dates. I, I, you know, as an extrovert, I don't understand that exactly. If you've been on a long phone call or you've mm -hmm. been on a date that went too long, you know, if mm -hmm. you're not following the manage your time piece, it's exhausting. You've talked a lot. You've, you've got noise in your head. You've exerted a lot of energy. So you need to maybe go home and take a walk or spend some quiet time alone. I, I had a client once who used to spend way too long on dates and she would have like this emotional hangover. You know, it was just like, yeah. I'm exhausted. So if you're not taking that time to recharge, you get really cranky and angry and don't even know why. So just paying attention to what's going on for me. Am I exhausted? Oh, that's because I just talked for two hours. I'm really tired. I need to, yeah. I need to just be in quiet. Yeah, no, that, yeah, good. Well, that probably goes to point number four to spend less time. I think you said here on uh, texting and phoning before a meeting, because I guess you're already exhausted <laughs> by the time yeah. you get there. You're exhausted, but you also have now attached to this person. And so... If you tend to be the kind of person who has expectations built because you've spent a lot of time texting and being on calls and you've built up something, it can be such a huge letdown and that's emotionally draining. And I think more so for somebody who's introverted, mm -hmm. who needs to really do that recharging. And so if you haven't spent a ton of time and I recommend like 
two texts on the site, get on a phone call for 20 minutes just to know if you can carry a conversation and then meet and come prepared with those questions and answers. And Mm -hmm. it's just going to make the whole thing so much more pleasant. Uh, Choosing a dating environment that's quieter and less overwhelming. I mean, we've already talked about that, but let's 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 revisit point five, why that is so important on a date. Yeah. De- definitely less less stimulating, less stuff coming in. You will be less tired, less overwhelmed. Yeah. Like, like you have a picnic outdoors, you go for a walk, you do something where you can talk to a person. Even doing the side by side on a walk is much less confronting than face to face over coffee, where you're trying to find things to talk about with a total stranger. So. Finding that environment, if somebody suggests going to a really nosy, noisy bar and uh, where people are nosy, and <laughs> <laughs> then um, you can you can say, you know what, it's really hard for me to hear and I really want to be able to hear you. Uh, can we choose someplace that's a little quieter? So don't be afraid to advocate for what you need. I think it's really important to do that. Yeah. Well, based on all your descriptions and your advice, I think introverts have it more together than extroverts. <laughs> I mean, it's so much more, it, it just sounds so much more meaningful. And I'm glad we're talking about this because it, it introversion to me almost sounds like, like more of a benefit than any sort of hindrance. You now, if you do f- uh, feel yourself being shy, again, that's another, another issue. But introversion in and of itself, uh, gosh, thumbs up. <laughs> Sandy, we're coming, we're coming to the end. What else is important uh, to mention here, both for people perhaps who don't understand it or who are introverts and dating? I think a lot of people are afraid to label themselves mm-hmm. and they feel it's limiting. But I mm-hmm. feel that when you understand yourself, you're going to do so much better in the world. So it's not to put a label in make you wrong in any way. I think for anybody, if you are an extrovert, an introvert, an ambivert, just know yourself, Mm -hmm. know yourself and act accordingly, because the more you know, the better you're going to be on dates and in the rest of your life. Yeah, I agree. I think these are good dating tips, period. And it's nice that we can put them with a label <laughs> uh, because people, you know, that it, you, yeah, we do identify that way. And I think the important thing that I want to leave again is that somehow extrovert is seen as somehow better. And my goodness, it absolutely is not. So again, Thank you, Sandy. I look so forward to the comments. I think this is a topic we can explore more, perhaps even, you know, go to the shy aspect of it. And I look forward to another conversation with you soon on Second Act TV. Mm -hmm.